Hey everybody, welcome to this week's online Connect lesson. Um, I want to make a quick announcement right here at the beginning to let you know that this coming Wednesday, Xavier Wu, one of your graduating seniors, is going to be preaching for our final uh, online student worship of the semester. So uh, make sure you tune in at 7.30 on Facebook. It will, um, it, it will be a premiere video on Facebook at 7.30, and then it'll be uploaded to YouTube later if you miss it. So uh, make sure you tune into that and uh, give some support to Xavier. I'm sure he's going to do a great job with that. Uh, today we are going to be in uh, Luke chapter 4. Again, we are going through Gospel Project uh, curriculum for Connect Lessons online, um, but there are also some discussion resources that I'm sending out on Facebook, on Instagram, and on uh, the Buck Run uh, COVID response page that I would really encourage you all to uh, talk through with your families. There's going to be discussion questions. Um, and I hope you get a little bit out of this lesson, but I really think that you'll benefit more uh, from those discussion questions than you will even from listening, listening to the lesson. So make sure that you check those out. Um, again, today we are going to be in Luke chapter 4, and um, we are going to start in verse 16. So if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. Uh, the main point that the Gospel Project has uh, given us this week is that Jesus' mission uh, wasn't without opposition, and neither will ours be. So Jesus had a mission, um, and he was opposed. He's given us a mission, and there will be opposition that comes to that. Um, so there are a lot of stories um, about a hero who um, is like the fulfillment of some sort of prophecy to save the world. So uh, an example of that is in the Chronicles of Narnia um, by C.S. Lewis, the Lion, the Witch, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, all of those siblings, there was a prophecy that there were going to be these siblings who would um, come into this world of Narnia and they would defeat the White Witch. And um, so they show up and uh, they go through this big, long series of events. And lo and behold, they defeat the White Witch and everything's better. Um, well, in the midst of that, in those, those sorts of stories, those people who were prophesied about always they always run into some sort of adversity, right? They always run into something that is opposing them accomplishing the mission that they've uh, been prophesied to do. Well, Jesus is the, uh, Jesus is the perfect real life example of this. So Jesus was, um, was prophesied about long, long before he came to earth. Um, and in that prophecy, it was said that he would save the world. Uh, but when he came to actually accomplish that mission, there was opposition that he had to face. Um, but Jesus pressed on through it, um, through that opposition to uh, accomplish his mission. So let's read in Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 14. Sorry, starting in verse 16. It says, He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? So uh, what we have here is there uh, in the, the, the Jews would gather together on the Sabbath day, um, which for them was Saturday. They would gather together into these synagogues and um, there would be a teacher who would uh, read from scripture, which for them was the Old Testament. Um, they would read from the Old Testament and um, there would be some sort of teaching around it. Um, so in this case, Jesus goes back to his hometown where he grew up. And um, he is, they're, they're in the synagogue, and he reads from the book of Isaiah. 
and it is a prophecy um, looking forward to the Messiah. Um, and Jesus basically says, y'all, that's me. So that is a really, really bold claim for a Jew. I mean, the, the Messiah has been prophes prophesied for hundreds and hundreds of years. So for a Jew to come out and be like, I'm him, um, that's a really, really bold claim. But not only that, for a guy who is a carpenter's son. So remember, he's in his hometown. He's around all the people that he grew up with. Um, and his dad was a carpenter. And uh, so like this guy from humble beginnings is now saying, hey, the Old Testament, all those prophecies, that was about me. That's a pretty bold claim, right? Um, so what was in that prophecy, though? If we look at that prophecy, we see he was to come to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Um, so initially, this prophecy was pointed towards um, Israel and, and the Jews as they were in exile in Babylon. Um, they were exiled and far away from home. And so this prophecy for them was, to, it, it was seeing them as, um, as, as, uh, being able to return home from their Babylonian exile. Uh, but we know that Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of this prophecy uh, because he comes to set us free from the sin, he, from the sin um, for the whole world, right? So Jesus comes um, to not just proclaim liberty to the captives of the Jews, uh, but he comes to proclaim liberty for all people who put their faith in him. Uh, so at first we see in this passage when he makes this bold proclamation, people kind of respond a little bit positively at first, um, but then things changed pretty quickly. They start asking these questions, isn't that Joseph's son? Isn't that the son of a carpenter? Um, and then if we, let's keep on reading because things uh, turn even even nastier. So um, if you go to verse 23, we'll keep, keep reading. He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in, the, in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. So um, wh what we see here is Jesus is going to be rejected by his hometown, and he points back to the saying of a, of a prophet not being, uh, not being welcome in his hometown, he, he points back to prophets of the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha. Um, so remember, these people, again, had seen Jesus grow up um, right before him, before their very eyes, um, and they just couldn't come to grips with his claim that he was a Messiah. They, they just weren't going to accept those claims because in their minds, this is still little uh, boy Jesus running around and, um, and growing up in their midst. Um, so he points back to these stories of Elijah and Elisha. And in both of these stories, God ends up helping the Gentile. Um, or God sends these prophets to uh, people outside of Israel, outside of their home, uh, because the, the people in their home didn't listen to the message that they brought them. The people at home were not obedient um, to their prophecy. And so God sent them to people that were outside of their home, people that were outside of Israel. Um, so what Jesus is pointing to here is he's, he's coming to his home and no one's listening to him. So he's saying, I'm going to go proclaim liberty to other people. I'm going to go save other people. Um, and this is, uh, this is what we end up seeing in the book of Acts whenever um, Jesus ascends and gives, gives his disciples the mission and they uh, go to uh, Jerusalem, to Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the world. Um, and we're still seeing that now that people uh, far, far away from Israel, including us, have received the gospel 
um, but it's in large part because Israel themselves rejected it at first. Uh, well, this did not get a good response from, uh, from the people in Nazareth. So uh, if you keep reading in verse 28, when they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. That's one of my favorite uh, favorite verses. He was, they're gonna kill this guy, and he's like, all right, I'm just gonna walk through you, and, um, and he just gets away. I just, I love that uh, passage, but um, the point is that the Nazarenes rejected Jesus, and they drive him out of their town, um, and they're gonna try to kill him, and this really foreshadows ultimately what would happen in Jerusalem. Whenever um, Jesus was driven out of the city gates and hung on a cross to die, um, but in, in both cases, he was rejected and he was driven out of the city. Um, but in both cases, that results in the salvation of many others. So um, the Nazarenes drove him out of their, their town, but he went on to the next town and he um, kept proclaiming liberty to the captives and, um, and, and kept proclaiming the gospel. And ultimately, uh, when he was rejected by the people in Jerusalem and crucified, he was ultimately bringing liberty to us um, from our sin. His rejection was our salvation. So to apply this a little, a little bit, number one, we just need to recognize what Christ did to us, did for us. We need to recognize that um, Christ did take on that rejection for us so that we could be saved. Um, and we need to put our faith in him for that salvation. But we also need to recognize that the rejection he faced, as his followers, we also are going to run into that sort of rejection. We are going to run into opposition as we go out on mission. Um, so we should have boldness knowing that our Savior went before us, knowing that Christ um, experience that rejection and embrace that rejection for us, um, before us. And we should have hope looking forward to the day uh, when that opposition is totally defeated and when we can spend eternity in the presence of Christ. Um, so let's rejoice in that gospel. Um, we'll see the opposition coming, uh, but we can endure it like Christ because he has gone before us in, uh, in that opposition. Again, I would encourage you to go check out those discussion questions, talk through those with your family, and uh, let me know if you need anything. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we'll hopefully see you on Wednesday at 7.30 on Facebook for Xavier Wu preaching our last student worship of the semester. Thanks, guys.